start off with prayer. Uh, we're going to get into uh, praise and worship and then get right into the word. Father, y'all, we come before you right now just magnifying your name. Thank you right now for this day that you have made. Father, y'all, we thank you. We come before you right now in repentance, Father, y'all. Father, y'all, we repent of sins we know of and that we know not of, Father, y'all. Father, y'all, we pray, Father, y'all, we let our will go, Father, y'all, and do the will of you, Father, y'all. Yes. Father, y'all, we come against all rocks of fear, Father, y'all, all rocks of anger, all rocks of confusion, all rocks of sickness and disease. Yes. Father, y'all, we just magnify your name because you're worthy, Father, y'all. Father, y'all, we just thank you right now as we begin to resist the enemy that he may flee, Father, y'all, and we draw down to you as you may draw down to us, Father, y'all. Father, y'all, forsaken the cares of this world, Father, y'all, we're looking forward toward the kingdom of you, Father, y'all. And Father, y'all, the name of the Son, you shall be we pray. So be it. So All right. Shalom, everybody, on this uh, Shabbat day. We just thank y'all for being able to hear us again. We're going to be talking about being born again. Uh, and so we, we're going to be dealing with a lot of stuff that you don't really hear uh, a lot of people talk about. A lot of people used to talk about what they're not doing wrong in the most high or what they are doing for the kingdom of Yah. But, you know, all these things are great. Like you can do things for the kingdom of Yah. You cannot be doing things which you deem to be wrong. But the thing is, the question is, are you being, are you born again, basically? So we're going to discuss uh, the process of being born again. So we talk about born uh, in its natural sense, you know, to be brought into existence. Uh, we talk about birth, the emergence of a new individual from the body of his parent. And we talk about the act or process of being uh, brought forth young from the womb. So, and then also we can have born as existing as a result uh, of a particular situation or feeling. And so basically, so you can be born like into sin, you know, you can be you know, a born loser, you know, just, just general things we talk about, you know, you can have a result of something that caused you to be the thing that, you know, you've been, uh, I would say, suppressed by. And so we're going to talk about a few strips here and get into, uh, we're going to get into First Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 22 and 23, and I'm kind of just going to be led by the Ruach. I got a script, but the, the most high, you know, the Ruach HaKadosh, I would say, is already getting me to venture a little bit, but uh, we're going to start off with that First Peter Chapter 1, verses 22 and 23 first. First Peter chapter 1, verse 22 reads, Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Ruach into unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart, fervently, being born from the beginning, not of a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of Yahuwah, which lives and abides forever. So it said being born from the beginning or translate being born again, not of a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. So you can be born of a corruptible seed, reading this strip. Uh, jump off note for a minute. I'm gonna go over to uh, First Peter chapter two, starting at that first verse. Uh, and this is something that it just kind of hit me while I was reading that about things we need to do. Like to be born again, the first step, you know, you have to repent. You have to turn from your wicked ways. And so that's why we're going to get into this, uh, starting at that first verse in uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that Yahuwah is gracious, to whom coming as into a living stone this allowed a deed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Okay, so basically what we're looking at here is you have to lay aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisy, all envies and all evil speakings. And so you can't even get the desired milk, the sincere milk, if you don't lay aside these things. So these are the things that you have to lay aside to even get to the point. It's like it's so much stuff that has to happen to be born again. It's not just and I would say just saying that you've been bought, you know, under the water into water baptism. It can't do it by itself. You have to be born of the water and born of the real Hakadesh. And that's that's being born again. Basically, it's a it's a state of being. Like you have to change your whole mindset has to change. You can't just look at it as, you know, saying that, you know, you got baptized and you move forth and continue doing everything that you've been doing. 
it doesn't work that way. So that was a process to being born again. The first step is to repent. And uh, we're not going to turn to Acts, but in Acts chapter 2, verse 37 and 38, after Stephen is stoned, uh, Peter gets up and he gives, a, you know, he gives a speech to him and Peter begins to talk to him. They say, what, what must we do to be saved? And Peter tells them to repent, every one of you, and be baptized in the name of Yahushua Mashiach for the remission of sin. And it's the thing. So you have to repent. Repent doesn't just mean say I'm sorry. It means to turn. It means to turn from what you're doing and fix it. It means that if it's going crooked to make it straight. When you just say I'm sorry and continue the same way, that's not being born again. Being born again is basically a lifestyle change. It's basically a, a mentality that you put on, which is the mind of Yahushua Mashiach. You can't be born again and still be operating as you, as you operate when you were born of the flesh. So you already into this world born of the flesh, but to be born of the Ruach HaKadosh, you know, is to be born through Yahushua Mashiach. It's saying that you put on the body of Yahushua Mashiach, that you took off the nature of the old man and all things have become new. And uh, so basically you got to repent. And you don't hear a lot of this repentance stuff going on. Like all you hear is like, uh, when I look at even from the walk up from the Christian world, it's just, a, it's just like another form of the world that's being created. It's like they're just making it a little bit more tolerable. It's like, okay, look, now we're talking about yeah, but we're still going to party, have a good time. It's like a mild clubbing situation going on, and it's less seeking Yah, it's less seeking the will of Yah, because doing good deeds doesn't mean that you're born again. Uh, you know, just uh, like I say, charities and all that stuff is good. You know, giving is good, but to be born again means to let your will go and to totally be born of the Ruach HaKadosh, and you have to actually do this through the symbolization of water baptism and you have to be filled with the real hypothesis you can't just say that you've been born again you have to actually do it it's a fight it's like it's, it's usually not a one-time event it's like you have to die daily to the things of the flesh you have to repent on a regular basis and get it right every day that you wake up there's a new challenge that sets that sets in front of you that that, that gives you the opportunity to conquer so it's like you see this challenge in front of you so you don't fall to it if you're used to talking about people or you're used to uh like I say, being involved in malice, guile, and, and hypocritical stuff, then you have that chance to get it right that day. You don't have to continue being a hypocrite. You don't have to continue, you know, uh, being a backbiter, a backstabber, a tail bearer, all this stuff we overlook. We don't think about the tail bearer stuff. People don't think about this stuff. It's like you just roll poor. It's like when people say, oh, look at him or look at her, and we get the whispering, and it's not for any edification. You're just sitting there just talking about somebody behind their back. That's not, you know, that's not being born again. That's operating in the flesh because you don't get anything out of that. What point is it that you're talking about somebody behind their back or throwing salt on somebody? Well, we know those that understand that terminology. You're going out the way to try to make somebody look bad so you can look good or either just to make them look bad in general to see their downfall. Right. You know, and that's what people do. That's not, that's the flesh, you know, doing these things, you know, being uh, what we call a hater. Like you can't be a hater and then say you're being born again there's nobody that's perfect in their own flesh. There's nobody that's perfect. You know, the flesh desires to sin constantly. That's why you have to crucify the flesh on a regular basis. The flesh itself, if it has its way, it'll do whatever. But it's up to you, through the Ruach HaKadosh, to constantly keep the flesh in check. You have to keep it in check, and you have to mod modify the deeds of the flesh. You can't just let the flesh have its way. They go for food. Anything that you're trying to do, you have to make sure that the flesh didn't lead you. And that the rock, we know that as long as we're in this world, we're going to have fleshly desires and things other flesh should be here, but we don't have to let them overtake us. We can't overcome these fleshly things, these fleshly desires, anything that's not like y'all that tries to stop or hinder your growth. And so to be born again is one thing, but babies don't stay babies. You know what I'm saying? When they're born, they grow into adults. We have a lot of people that are saying they're born again, but they're still operating on the baby level. It's like that come, you know, when it comes to hearing you who are, you know, come to hearing the Royal High Condition General, it's like, it has to get to a point where, you know, okay, now I heard that this road is not the road to go down. I need to turn and go down another road. And that's the repentance part. Like, you can't be born again without being, without being, uh, I would say, in a repentant mind state on a regular basis. I mean, you got to be in, a, this, has, this is a daily thing. You have to constantly, when you wake up that day, there's new devils, there's new challenges, there's new opportunities, new, everything is set before you that day it's the day that you get started and say, okay, look, this is the day that I'm facing whatever challenge I'm going to face. And I'm going to operate, you know, as close as I can in the Ruach to overcome these challenges. If not, the flesh just going to have its way that day. 
And so you have to make it known that day that you're making that conscious decision to not operate in the flesh. If you don't, I mean, it has to be intentional. If, if you don't, I mean, you have to come up with some type of declaration, anything you can do to keep your mind inside uh, the realm of things, because what happens is the enemy wants you to be nonchalant and just let things, nothing just happens. Everything happens because of, the, because of a cause and effect situation. You make a choice, and then there's a consequence behind the choice. Nothing just falls out the sky. You don't just stumble one day and, and fall into sin. It doesn't work that way. Sin comes behind the choice you made. It's a conscious decision. And, and just like you made the conscious decision to sin, you have to make that conscious decision to walk in the Ruach HaKadosh and not sin. So to be born again is one thing, but to grow and, and actually begin to uh, get off the milk is a whole nother thing because it'll get to a point where you'll still be on the milk and you'll be into a situation where you're supposed to be old. And like, just because you're in like the 12th, you know, you're in the 12th grade with a fifth grade mindset, the work doesn't change. You still have to pass that test. And so the test is going to keep presenting itself until you go back, do whatever you got to do to get back to that point to build yourself up where you can actually pass that test because you're going to be test based and graded upon the stage that you're supposed to be in, not based upon what your mindset is. So the mindset has to come up to where you're supposed to be. And so if it's been, I would say, people that's been knowing the most high 10, 15, 20 years, and they still dealing with stuff from when they first got, you know, saved, then that means they're still on the milk. And but they still fighting these fights that are not a milk. Like the fights are coming at you as if you would be on meat. Because technically you're supposed to be in group, but the spirit realm has nothing to do with that. It doesn't respect the fact that you didn't stay and that you didn't keep yourself on track and that you didn't grow from one stage to another, it's gonna come at you with the attack that it should be coming for where you're supposed to be at. And so you have to come up to the level where you're supposed to be at to be able to deal with the attacks that's coming on that level. It's not, you're not gonna be fighting a milk fight when you're supposed to be eating meat. The fight is gonna be for meat eating. And, it's, and that's the thing. So you wonder why I'm losing the battle. You losing the battle because you're fighting on a level as if it's milk. Like the pacifier and all that is over. I mean, it's time to chew the meat up. Teeth have grown in the Ruach and you're still operating like you're gum and stuff. And that's what that's what we're dealing with. You have to be able to deal with this on a level of saying, okay, look, I know that I have this mentality of milk, but to get the meat, the sincere meat, you have to yield. You have to turn. You have to repent. As long as you're trying to carry that heavy weight, you know, you're not going to be able to get to that point because the weights are heavy. The weight of this world is heavy. The expectations of people in this world are heavy. Like you don't have to, to meet people's expectations. You have to just meet the expectation that the most high wants you to, be, to come to. This is one thing, trying to prove a point to people. That's what stresses a lot of people out. You're trying to live up to somebody's expectation that you may have knew in the past or they may think. This. It doesn't matter what nobody thinks, how far they think you should have got. All that matters is that once you repent, that you go to the stage you need to be at with the most high and start hearing his voice and start moving at that point. Who, who all don't understand it is not your responsibility. You're going to connect with people that do understand it. And this is why you have to make sure that when you are communicating, we know that evil communication corrupt good manners. So you can't be communicating on a level with ones that are not going to make sure that iron is not, you know, iron has to sharpen iron. So it's the conscience of man, the conscience of man. That's what we have going on. So that's how you grow. You know, you're not going to be able to grow in a setting where someone is not really trying to come up to the level that you're trying to go to. The only thing you can do is witness to them and keep moving. Because if you don't, what happens is the enemy is still going to bring these attacks and they're going to hinder you as if that you were eating that meat, but you're still on a milk level because you're looking back. Don't look back. Don't worry about nothing. Just look forward. Look forward. And as you look forward, you'll begin to grow in the things of God. Forget about yesterday. Yesterday is gone. This is a new day. It's new mercies, new grace. And, you know, there are new, new barriers. So you have to look at being born again. It's a mindset. And that mindset calls, this is like a call to action. Like that mindset brings a call to action. Like you have to make sure that you're coming to a point to say, okay, I know that I'm in the flesh, but I have to operate in the rock to be able to fight the demons that's coming against me, to be able to fight the negative thoughts that I have to cast down on a regular basis. They're not going to stop. Negative thoughts are going to come until you leave this place. I mean, it's going to all, that's the job of the demonic realm to bring negative thoughts. Your job is to cast them down. And it's like, we can't you know, think this magical thing like there's some barrier up where the most high is stopping thoughts from coming. No, he wants you to put in your thinking box up here the thoughts that you're going to be thinking on. So when these negative thoughts come, you got so many of those thoughts that you're thinking on that is going to block these thoughts out as they come. But the thoughts are going to come. And the more that you're yielding to something, the more that the more 
is going to come. The more that, you, that you're operating or you're struggling in the area, the more the enemy is going to bring these thoughts to try to make you fall. And that's the reason why you have to be focused on the repenting part. I'm, I'm drilling this in because if you don't repent, then it's not going to matter. It's like it's going to be, you're going to be, the, I would say, psych yourself out to think that you're doing the right thing. Like the word said, there's a way that seemed right on the man, but the end of it, you know, is corruption. It's death. And so you're not going to be able to, to conquer any of these battles by operating in the mentality of, you know, not repenting. You can't just overlook the fact that you got to repent. You have to repent. You have to turn. If you don't turn, then you, you're just fooling yourself. And, and the enemy sees that. He sees you're doing the same thing that you've been doing, yet you're calling on the most high. And the most high hand is reach, reaching out to get you, but you're not turning. He can't deal with the sin. The sin is what separates us from the most high. It's the sin. And, and everything that has that sin involved comes with a weight. It comes with something that presses you down and makes the work have to be two or three times harder to be accomplished. And if you're sinning, if you're operating in the flesh, you can't get things done. The Ruach is swift. You know, saying that when the Ruach start moving, it moves, and you don't know which way the Ruach is moving. But when you're operating in sin, it's a slow emotion. And the motion is so slow, it allows, you know, this is something I don't want to get off into, but it allows the other realm to detect which way you're moving. But when you start operating in the Ruach, that's why I start talking about in Jude, praying in your utmost, modest, uh, in your utmost holy state in the Ruach HaKadosh. And the thing that you don't know of is, is that it's the Ruach that begins to pray to be able to, reveal, to be able to reveal these things unto you and firm these whatever it may be that's going on. You pray in the Ruach HaKadosh, it'll begin to build you up. It'll build your faith up. And this, we have to look at, these are the things we got to get back to, to grow. Because right now, all I can see now is, is, is like bright things in Yahushua Shamanship, but I see doom and gloom concerning those that are going to operate in the flesh. Because it's going to be so much stuff happening with the wars and room of the wars that's getting ready to take place that you're not going to be able to sustain yourself mentally. Gas may go to $7, 8 a gallon. We don't know what's going to happen, but whatever it is, when you operate in the Ruach, he'll make provision for you to operate and begin to do things, he'll he'll begin to make the difference for you financially to deal with this stuff outside of what everybody else is doing because he don't change. He said, I changed not. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So just because it gets $7 a gallon, it doesn't change him. But what happens is it changes your your uh, your perception of him when you're operating in the flesh. So it brings doubt. It brings fear. And you're going to say, well, how am I going to do this? How am I going to eat? This starting, they starting to, you know, the food is leaving, stores are closing. You're going to wonder how am I going to make it? You don't have to wonder how you're going to make it if you operate in the Ruach HaKadosh. But when you operate in the flesh, it brings fear. And so you start, you know, allowing this stuff to penetrate. And then at that point, you begin to operate on the level of everybody else that's thinking that they're going to be doomed. The world has come to an end, all this stuff. If the world comes to an end for us, that's a good thing. Like that, this world is evil anyway. And so, you know, you just need to know where you're going when it comes to an end. Only people that worry about the world coming to an end are those that are of the world. That's why the word in James say the friendship of the world is empty with Yah. Like you don't want those that are a friend of the world. You don't want to be a friend of the world and a friend of Yah at the same time. You can't serve both of them. So if the world ends for us, that's a great thing. We look for another one. We look for the new kingdom to come. So we're not focused on a world and everything that's going on with these events. We're just making sure that we're prepared to deal with them when they come. So, so uh, Anyway, you must be born of water and of the Ruach HaKadosh. So we're going to start with John chapter 3. Uh, John chapter 3, starting off at the uh, at the first verse. And we'll stop periodically to break down uh, Nicodemus uh, as he began to uh, approach Yahushua Mashiach in secret. I don't know if he done this because he was ashamed or who was going to see him or whatever. I would say uh, what his deal was, but he came you know, in secret, he came where there was no one else around but them two, so he can talk to him in private uh, as he had been observing him. So we'll look at John chapter 3, starting off at the first verse. We'll read 1 and 2. All right. John 3, first verse. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Yahudim. The same came to Yahushua by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from Elohim, for no man can do these miracles that you do except Elohim be with him. Okay, so this proves that Nicodemus noticed uh, Yusha Mashiach. He noticed his miracles. He noticed that he was a teacher. He saw the anointing. And the signs and wonders followed Yusha Mashiach. And remember the word said, signs and wonders should follow them that believe. 
He said, in my name shall you cast out devils and, and everything that you do, all these, all the miracles and all the signs of wonders will be because you believe in me. But the one that said this is actually performing this. Like, like Nicodemus is seeing everything that he's doing. He's seeing that he's teaching. He's seeing it say, do these miracles. So he saw the miracles. So the miracles is what it was that actually drew him to Yahushua Mashiach, the miracles and the teaching. So with him seeing this, this showed that Yahushua Mashiach wasn't just talking about this. He was actually putting this stuff in action. The miracles were actually what drew Nicodemus to want to talk to him. It, it, it made Nicodemus say, okay, look, I need to see what is this? Where is this? Who is this that has this power? You know, the most high has to be with him. It said, it said, no one can do this except Elohim be with him, except the most high is with him. So he knew that this wasn't the power of darkness. He had enough, uh, I would say, uh, discernment to understand that this wouldn't happen through just his own will. He knew that he had to have a higher power to help him to do this. Uh, let's look at, uh, let's look at, uh, let's, let's flip to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 17. Uh, just something I want to just throw in there. It's talking about being a new creature. And you can just read it. So I just say All right. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be a Mashiach, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Okay. So, so if any man be a Mashiach, he is a new creature. So we're talking about being born again. And that's why I threw it in there. So, you, you know, you have to be become a new creature. You can't just be the same. Like, you can't be the same you were. Like, when you actually come from forth, come forth out of the womb, you come into, into existence. Like, you're not the same as you were when you were in the womb. And you come out into existence. It's like, at this particular point here, like, he's looking at this situation here. The, most, the more he look at this, the more he probably makes him say, okay, man, I got to talk to this guy. I got to figure out, you know, I know that the most side with him, but in his mind, he's probably saying, how is he doing this? And, he, and he, you know, it makes him, you know, curious about, you know, the situation because it's a witness. When you start letting signs and wonders follow you and you start doing miracles, it makes people want to, you know, draw to the most side. It makes them want to be, you know, I would say, uh, to study the things of Yah and to get to a point where they can say, okay, I want to have something to do with that. That's why Simon the Sorcerer wanted to buy the Ruach HaKadosh. And, and Peter and them told him, your money perish. You know what I'm saying? You know, you, know, you can't buy this. I mean, you can't buy this right here. This is holy. I mean, this here is cold dead. You can't buy this. But Simon the Sorcerer wanted to buy it because he was involved in witchcraft. And he seen that everybody they laid hands on was being healed, that he wanted that power. And that's the thing. And it makes people want to have that power. But the power has to be obtained in the Ruach HaKadosh. It can't be obtained from the wicked one. But Simon was getting his from sorcery. But he knew that this power was greater than the power he had. And so he said, I want to have something to do with that. And that's the same thing going on with Nicodemus. He's observing Yahushua Mashiach. And he's saying, okay, look, I know that this has to be a yacht. I know there's no evil force that you're doing this by. You're doing this through Yahushua Mashiach. And so therefore, to do these things, you have to be a new creature. You can't do this in the flesh. You can't, you can't have this in the flesh. You have to be born again in order to operate in the things of Yah. Because when you're born again, your whole perception changes. Like it begins to put you in a position where you're no longer, I would say, selfish. Because if you could see to let your will go, you have to not be selfish in order to let your will go and let the will of the Most High be done. You have to let go the very existence of you and what you think you came here to do. Like you have to look at, okay, I know what I think I came here to do, but now I must do the will of him that sent me. And in order to do that, you have to let go certain desires. You have to let go certain things that you think that, you know, that you want to do on your own and do it for him. And this, was, this, this is when the real work comes in, when you have denied yourself from something that you know for a fact you want to do. And the Most High is telling you to do this. And it don't make sense to people. It don't make sense to nobody, but you and the Most High. It, it has to be done. It's an action. It's nothing that you can explain. It's like, I, I know if you look at me, you say, okay, look, this guy is a great mechanic. Shouldn't he be working on cars? But the Most High, yeah, that's a, he gave me that gift, but he want me to do this. He just sent you in a whole different direction, but the natural mind of people say, well, you ain't operating in your gift. That, what you mean, my gift? That's, a, that's something he gave me. That's something I can do, but that don't mean that's what he want me to be at concerning the kingdom of him. This is just something he want me to have, and I can have this and still operate with it, but that don't mean that that's his, the calling of him for my life, is to be a mechanic. That's the thing. Like, we don't turn this into no mechanic ministry. You know what I'm saying? Like that, like people try to do, they try to attach worldly things and try to turn it, I got my this ministry, whatever you want to call it, and they put ministry behind it. 
just because it's something you can do, that don't mean that's where the most high is going to always have you at at that time. It don't mean you won't ever be there, but there's no nothing written in stone that's saying what you do naturally is where the actual ministry is coming from. Paul was a tent maker. Didn't talk about him having a tent making ministry. You know what I'm saying? They talk about him going out doing the work of Yah, and he made tents to make money. And that's the thing. That's just a perfect example. But in the world, we have this motivational stuff and all this new age stuff got people so tricked out of their mind to thinking, well, find your passion, your this, and what's your this, all this stuff. Everything has to be lined up with the will of Yah. That's the thing. It don't matter what you can do. It don't matter if you're a rocket scientist. And he may not work, want you working on rockets. He may want you doing something else, but people that's in the flesh going to say, well, shouldn't you be doing that? Because they're looking at the money. And they're looking at the carnality of it saying, this will provide, but what's going to provide is the gift the most high wants you operating in. What he wants you doing, that's the gift that's going to make room for you. Not the carnal gift only that you see going on. It don't mean the carnal won't make room for you, but I'm saying just because you have a carnal talent or something that you have that you can do doesn't mean this is where the most high wants you operating in. Like we can't think on a fleshly level and just dumb ourselves down. We have to come outside the box and quit thinking about things as what we see with our natural eyes. We have to get in the real high condition, get to a point where we can hear the most high and move by the real high condition. And when you're moving through the real high condition, you're not moving carnal. I mean, it's like it's not going to always make sense to the natural mind. It's not going to make sense. And it's like we want to make sense out of everything. I know that there's a way that you should operate. You should conduct yourself in certain manners, but everything is not going to be logical when it comes to the most high. He's not the author of confusion, but he will send you in a way that seems to be a way that's not normal to where you think you're supposed to be going. And uh, so anyway, we talked about that, you know, like say, happened to be a new preacher. That was 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. And uh, anyway, let's do uh, 4 and 5. 4 and 5 of the same John 3 uh, verse. Uh, okay. Yeah. We're going to John now? Yeah, yeah, back to John. The, the topic is going to be John 3, 1 through 10. We'll periodically turn off of a sum. So now we're going to do John 3, verse 4 and 5. Uh, I don't think I read three. You want to read three? You got three? Yeah, 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 yeah I do. read one and two. Okay, do three. All right. So uh, John chapter three, verse three, Yahushua answered and said unto him, amen, amen, I say unto you, except a man be born from the beginning, he cannot see the kingdom of Yahuwah. Okay, and so that's what we went with with that. That's why I turned to 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, being a new creature. And so, and we're going to go forth and go to uh, 4 and 5 now. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Yahushua answered, Amen, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Ruach, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Yahuwah. Okay, so you have to be born of water and of the Ruach. And you have to. You can't just be born of just the water. You have to be born of water and of the Ruach. And I know we're doing a lot of turning, so bear with me. So we're going to go to Matthew 3 and 11, where Yahuwah talks about the fire baptism. And let's go to Matthew 3 and 11. But you have to be born of water and of the rock. You can't just be uh, baptized in the water. And ba water baptism only is not enough. And I'm seeing that. I'm seeing that everywhere. I'm seeing that now that we're in this walk, I see a lot of immersion going forth. And we're not knocking immersion, but it don't stop right there. And I'm, and I'm not seeing the rest of it. Like just to go down in water and come up, you know, to me, you can go down a wet devil and come up a wet devil. That's it. I mean, when you come up, there should be something else that you're seeking. I mean, like that, because when Yahushua Mashiach came up and say the rock came upon him, you know, saying like that, you know, as, as, as the rock of a dove, like that. So it wasn't over when he did the water baptism. We're seeing the water baptism go on as like, it's almost like some type of Catholic ritual or something like that. You keep saying a whole lot of this going on, but when you do that, what's next? See, I know in my mind, you know, when I think about water baptism, I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I'm putting on the body of Yahushua Mashiach. When I go down, I come up. I don't want to come up. Like I was carnal. I'm, I'm doing everything I can to seek the most high and to figure out what I need to be doing through the Ruach at this point. Not just excited to have some type of uh, ceremony like some Christian or something like that when they baptize babies and stuff like that. It's not the mindset to be in. You have to be in the mindset of, of having a renewed mind when you come up out of that water or seeking a renewed mind when you come up out of that water. It may not happen instantly, but it shouldn't be, the focus shouldn't be just the water. It should be okay. This is the symbol. Now I'm finna put action with the symbol, symbolization of, of, of putting on the body of Yahushua Mashiach. So we did what we had now. John, uh, we just read Matthew we 3. Read Matthew. Okay. So we're talking about fire baptism. Go ahead. 
Wait, let me see. It. Matthew 3 and 11. Mm -hmm. Matthew 3 and 11. I indeed immerse you with water into repentance, but he that comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall immerse you with the Ruach HaKadosh and with fire. Okay, and that's what I want to get at. So you need the Ruach HaKadosh and with fire with that water. You can't just have the water baptism only. John told you, say, I, I indeed baptize you with water. And this is what we're seeing. A lot of John's baptism going on. Like when you hear it in the Christian where you see him saying, I baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Here they're saying the same thing, putting the words, you know, of the Ruach HaKadosh and Yahushua Mashiach and, you know, and Yahuwah. They're saying the same thing. But when you get to Peter, Peter said, now from this point on, every one of you get baptized in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. That's the way it's supposed to go because John let you know my baptism had to go. John had a whole ministry. This is what I'm talking about by, you know, having a renewed mindset. You have to look at things for what they are. You can't just think in the mentality of, okay, look, when you look at it just getting wet, you don't have a problem with John's pattern. You, you look at it as, okay, it's no big deal. Well, it's not that it's a big deal. It means that when you look at things line upon line and precept upon precept, you say, okay, if I want to get it right, I want to make sure I'm putting on the body of the Mashiach. And that's what it's supposed to be. And, and when you put that focus on, it takes away, when you look and focus on the Mashiach, it takes away a lot of this entitlement. It takes away a lot of this, you know, we know we're the people, but at the same time, it puts a responsibility on us when we say, but when you focus on John baptism and put you in this mindset, you know, oh yeah, we Hebrew, you know, we're doing this and yeah, we the people and white man and devil and all this stuff, you know, even though we know I'm not saying that, I'm saying you, you get that mindset there. You don't get the mindset that all the Gentiles must come in so that our eyes can be open. That's the thing. And that's that's the mindset you put on when you put on you show me shit. What did he tell Peter? Peter said, I have never ate anything common or unclean. He said, no, nah, arise. He need him to go meet Cornelius. And Cornelius was of the Italian band. He said, look, this is what you're going to do. You know what I'm saying? This is what you want to do. You're not going to just focus on those that are of, 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 of your nationality. I need you to bring some in to come into the fold. That's why Paul took Timothy in. And when Paul took Timothy in, Timothy was what we would call half and half. But he had to get him circumcised so that the uh, Yehuda wouldn't be so mad at him. Yashra wouldn't be pissed because, hey, who are you bringing this guy in to do this work? But this is who the Ruach HaKadosh fell upon. This is who the Most High wanted to use. And it didn't take away from who they were because we see Barnabas went his way. But Paul went his way. But Paul's mission was to the Gentiles. And that's the question that's being raised. Okay, how are they going to come in when you don't witness to them? Don't mean you fold. It don't mean that you, you know, you say you're not the people no more. It means that you don't have the blindfolds on and be so focused on being the people that you don't get the big picture. The big picture is when he opened the door, he said, I came unto my own and my own received me not. But when he opened the door unto them, he had to open the door wide so everybody can come in. And so now that everyone is able to come in, they're going to grab hold to us as the natural branches. But it doesn't mean that the Most High doesn't care about his people. It just means his people need to care about those also that needs to come in so that they can be saved. Because salvation is for everybody at this point. And that's what we have to realize. When you see that, when that picture comes to you, all you got to just put in your mind is the fire of hell. If you think about the fire of hell, it's the rock of Yahuwah that's going to allow that fire to burn forever. And you want somebody to go there based on the fact that you're saying who you are? That's the selfish mentality. When you repent and you begin to put on the mind of you some shit, you can keep your pride in who you are, yet at the same time, bring us a full responsibility on yourself to draw those in that want to hear the word, those that want to be saved. There, here it is. Here's the water. You know, what, what hinders them from being baptized, not just by, by water, but by water and by fire in rural Hagadish. That's the thing. So that has to happen. And if you don't, if you're not focused on that, if you focus on water alone, it puts you in this Roman Catholic mentality. You know what I'm saying? It puts you in this mentality of just uh, the letter only, where you only focus on, on actions, on deeds, and on what you can do. Like most people, when you get to talking to them, they'll say what they done right or what they have not done. Oh, I ain't never done this. I don't do nothing wrong. Well, I do this, do this, and I do that and this for the kingdom. Are you repentant? Do, are you born again? That's the thing. Because you can give every dime you got to a charity and you can spend your life and go be a monk somewhere and just be there forever. But if you ain't born again, it doesn't matter. The most high wants you to be born again. That's still a selfish act. Because to be born again, that means that you're letting your will go and letting the will of the most high be done in your life. But to do that, you have to deny your flesh. You have to deny yourself some pleasure. 
something that you want to do, you have to say, okay, I know I used to do this. Now I'm willing to do this. It's a daily thing. Like the Apostle Paul said, we die daily. Every day you get up, you repent, and you start fresh. It's a new day. It's a new mercy, right. new challenges. Everything is, is happening fresh that day. It doesn't erase consequences or whatever it is from other days, and it doesn't erase the, 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 the blessings of Barakas from those days. It just means that now this is a day that I'm focused on, and I'm moving forward this day. And I understand that this day, I'm picking up my stake to follow him. I'm not going to focus on what I did wrong that day. I'm going to focus on what I'm going to do right today and from this moment forth, because it's supposed to be not a wish washer thing, but a repentance. And in, in order to repent and be baptized, you can't just focus on the water, because water keeps you in religion. But the Ruach HaKadosh in fire puts you in a position where now you're saying, I'm an agent of the Most High, being born of Yahushua Mashiach, ready to operate and do his will. It puts a responsibility on you when you do that. It's, it's not the same when you get to looking at it. It's, the rituals are going at that point. All we know is it's a symbolization, but at that time, we, we're going into now a responsibility. Because if you're saying you're something, then if I buy a pen, I don't expect it to act like a pencil. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, just trying to get like, if, like if you a pen, like if I get milk, I don't want a drink. Like I'm saying, like you have to be now who you saying you are, and see it takes away the responsibility when you just do this John stuff. It's like you can just keep on having a party and have the mild club because all I'm seeing a bunch of mild clubbing and a bunch of just you know just a lot of old fellowship and it's not real saying that they want to repent. I'm seeing women get disrespected. I'm seeing. You know, all kind of stuff, just people operate in, in any manner that they want to operate just to actually say that they're the people. And so it's like you're trying to say, look, I'm not going to do what Peter said to put away all malice and all hypocrisy. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just say, since I know I'm the people, it doesn't matter. I'm going to function how I want to function. That's what they're saying. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm not going to do what he want me to do. And they won't tell you that, but the actions show that, like that attitudes are bad quick to snap off and all this kind of stuff like that. That's not of the most high. I don't mean you're weak. It's like you, like, like my, one of my slogans is you strike when it's time to strike, but then you, 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 you mild just like a dog. You know what I'm saying like that. So pretty much that's it. You have to make sure that you operate through the rock because your Hushama shit wasn't passive. He whooped them out of the temple. You know what I'm saying? When they were doing things, say my, my father's house should be called a house of prayer, not a den of thieves and robbers. And so he knew when it was time to do things, but the thing was, what we see lacking is people that are not being moved with compassion. Because when people were sick, he said he was moved with compassion and he healed them. The, the, the compassion is lacking. Compassion is what brings forth healing. And to get compassion, you have to draw nigh to the most high. And you have to let your will go to do the will of Yah. There is no healing without compassion. I mean, don't get me wrong. I understand that there are going to be those that have, we talk about the gifts and calling without repenting and things of that nature, but that don't mean that there's not compassion to do the will. It just means that they have compassion to do that, but they're still doing things of their own. They're still operating hypo in uh, hypocrisy. But at the end, he's going to tell them, you know, depart from me, your work was a work of iniquity. We, that's, some, that's a personal thing. The work will still be done, but if you want to make it into the kingdom, you want to hear them say, enter into my rest. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You want to hear that because you'll hear either one and the work will still be done. We saw him open the donkey's mouth. So it's like, it don't mean that the work won't get done. He said the rocks are crowd if they don't start praising me. So the work going to still get done. Just saying this for the scholars that are out here. I mean, like we ain't going to try to get technical. We understand that I'm focused on not being one of those ones that doing what I want to do in the healing. But I want to make sure that I'm lined up with him and compassion is coming forth and the healing is coming. I don't want my gift to be just, that when they talk about without repentance, I want to be with repentance. That's the thing. And so to have it with repentance, you have to operate in a repentant mind state. But uh, anyway, we talk about the fire baptism, you know, not just John water baptism. We're going to go to six. We're going to stop at 10. Let's go to six right quick. And uh, that same John chapter three, uh, starting off at the sixth verse about being born of the flesh. It would be John chapter three, uh, starting off at the, yeah, the sixth verse. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Ruach is Ruach. Okay, so you see you can be born of the flesh. So that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Ruach is Ruach. So you can be born of the flesh. We know that we're born of the flesh already, but I'm saying, not saying that. I'm looking at this in a twofold situation where we know that we're born into this world in the flesh, and you have to be born again, but you can still be also, you know, I would say carnal. You know what I mean? I would say forth like carnally minded to the point where you start taking different uh, 
natures of things that, that are here in the flesh. I mean, you start taking on things, like you start being a king sinner. I'm talking about somebody that we label as a liar. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you say, when you see this person coming out, they, we know they were born in the flesh, but they've taken this other baby on. Like now they now we see them every time they come, they're lying. You know, people you see, all they do is lie. You already know when they open their mouth, they finna tell a lie. They are labeled as a liar. So they are born of the spirit of lying. They, 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 they actually produce this. It's like, this is what they have. I mean, you have people that are, uh, you know, hormones. You have people that are uh, hypocrites in general. Don't practice what they preach. I mean, you know, you got people doing all kinds of stuff, backbiting, telebearing, people that's constantly talking behind somebody's back on a regular basis, trying to throw salt, trying to tear them down. They're born of that. This is what they have. They've they've allowed this right here to be produced through them. That's the thing. I mean, they gave birth to this hypocrisy. You know what I mean? Like that. And this is all you see going on. So therefore, you know, you have to look at it deeper and say, okay, look, I don't want that. I want to be born of the Ruach HaKadosh. And to do that, you have to let these things go. It's not a sense of being hard or easy. It's just a sense of guilt. You know, it just takes away the actual, the nature of man. I mean, you have to actually say, look, my pride has to go. I'm going to submit my will. Like he said, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden with sin. He said, he said, you know, take my yoke. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. He said, I'll give you rest for your soul. So to get that rest, you have to submit yourself. That's what it says in James. It says, resist the devil and he will flee. Submit yourself unto God. Say, draw nigh to Yah, he will draw nigh to you. That's the thing. So you can't just, you know, draw nigh to Yah without resisting the enemy. A lot of people are still trying, they're trying to skip that. That's trying to skip repentance and just go straight to Yah. You're just going straight to the most high. I don't care about what's going on. He'll, you know, perhaps, you know, nevertheless, he may just bless you. Like, you don't want to operate like that. You want to be able to turn your face to the wall and be able to do, just say, okay, look, this is everything I did right. I'm trying to do the best I can. You know, I need, I'm standing in need right here. I'm forgetting everything that I want to do and I want to do what you want me to do. He'll show you what he wants you to do if you're willing to let go of what you want to do. That's the thing. And that's a hard thing for the flesh to do, to let go of their will because people think they're born with their own purpose and will. But the most high sometimes reveal purpose is later. You'll be knowing you're born to do something in a carnal stand. That's what I'm saying. You may be born of whatever, you know, to do whatever you've been born to do, uh, car race or whatever it is, like I say, mechanic, anything or so or whatever it is, you've been born to do that. But when the most high get hold of you, he starts showing you something else. And we want to stick hold to only that carnal lady that we've seen and we want to ride that out to the end. It don't always work that way. Things don't always work like you saw from the beginning all the way to the end. You, you have to allow the most high to come in and to wreck your world. You know what I'm saying? To come in and mess everything up inside and say, look, everything that I've been trying to do, I had it wrong. Now I'm going to allow him to mix all this up. He'll come mix your whole mind up. That's it. You'd be like, man, I thought I was supposed to do this, but this is what you thought. But the thing is, are you excited now? Like you were excited when this idea came that you saw you were born to do on your own. See these motivational speakers and all this stuff. I know how to listen to that stuff and eat the meat and spit out the bone. It corrupt a lot of people. Motivational speakers, the universe seekers, and all this earth stuff and all that. It messes a lot of people up because they get into it so deep they don't realize that it's, it's it's trying to connect with your natural self and what you were born to do. You know, you're you're born to do the will of Yah and whatever it is that Yah called you to do. But since you have this talent and this gift, you focus on it so heavy and so hard, so you're not willing to change. When he said, "I know this doesn't make sense." But this is what I want you to do. And it may not even make sense with what you've seen. It may not make sense financially, but this is the thing. If you trust the most high, he'll allow you to make the finance you need to make. It's not a stupid decision. It's just that this is not the will of Yah for your life. This is just something you know how to do real good. And, and you have to accept that by letting go your will and doing the will of Yah. Yeah. Going to the next, we uh, we'll be stuck up at. Uh, I need to read seven. Okay, so yeah, we can uh look at that right there. Right. John three and seven. Marvel not that I said unto you, ye must be born from the beginning. The wind blows where it wills, and ye hear the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it comes and whether it goes. So is everyone that is born of the ruach. Okay, so there, uh, we're gonna turn to First Corinthians two and nine to try to parallel that. You know, talking about uh when you're born of the ruach how things are versus how things are when you're born, when you're carnal. So it's going to be a uh, second Corinthians chapter two, verse nine. Second Corinthians or first? Oh, first Corinthians, my bad. First Corinthians. All right. First Corinthians chapter two, verse nine reads, 
But as it is written, eyes has not seen, nor ear has heard. Neither have entered the heart of man the things which Yahuwah has prepared for them that love him. Okay, so it say, eyes have not seen, nor ears heard. So this is showing you that he's operating in the Ruach. Go ahead. But Yah has revealed them unto us by his Ruach. For the Ruach searches all things, yea, the deep things of Yahuwah. It says, but Yah has revealed them to us by his Ruach. So how are you going to get them revealed to you if you don't have the Ruach? That's the thing. But we're looking at, like, when you focus only on, like I was saying, the water baptism only as a symbol. I'm not saying one that, you know, that's doing that or not focusing on the next thing, but from my experience and the lifestyle I see, what I've discerned from the individual, they're stopping that. The ones that I've seen, not everybody, but the majority of them feel like they're just stopping with that. When you take that next step and you get baptized of fire and Ruach HaKadosh, then you put yourself in position to do what Jews say when you're praying in your utmost, modest, utmost holy faith in the Ruach HaKadosh. That means that your, your Ruach is praying, praying. So if there's infirmities, there's anything that you need to know, secret thing, it'll be revealed through the Ruach. He said, reveal them these things, the deep things of him, by the Ruach, by the Ruach HaKadosh. And so you're not going to get nothing revealed that you operate carnal. That's the thing. That's what we need to focus on. A lot of carnality I've been seeing going on in what we call the walk, uh, to a point where all I know now, I'm focused. I'm, I'm looking forward, looking straight. I'm not focused on anything that the most I say, don't focus on. I ain't gonna speak on something he's saying, don't speak on, no personal attacks going on. This is just straight up. Wanna make sure I make it into the kingdom and stay focused. That's the thing. The only thing you can do to do that is to repent and to make sure that you're born again. If you're not doing that, then, you know, I don't know what, know what to tell you because that's what it's gonna take to make it. Uh, we're gonna keep going now. We're gonna go back to nine and 10. All right. Nine, 10. John chapter, John chapter three, 3, verse 9. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Yahushua answered and said unto him, Are ye are you a master of Yahshua all and know not these things? So he would let them know, like, you know, you're a master and stuff. You, you're very educated. You don't know these things because they're revealed through the Ruach. Like, you can be a scholar of the word, but that don't mean that you have the Ruach HaKadosh. It just okay. means that you've studied the word and you understand the word. And you won't understand that all things are lawful but not expedient because you'll be only focused on what you've seen in the written word. Like, everything that's saying can do doesn't mean everybody got to do it just because it's saying you can do it. What you need to be focused on is well the laws, the statutes, and the commandments of the Most High and all this extra stuff that, you, that they've learned. They don't know how to really maneuver in the Ruach because they're not dealing in the Ruach, they're dealing in carnal. That's why you have so many battles of doctrine going on. That's carnal. Like you don't have to battle doctrine with nobody when you're in the Ruach HaKadosh. You can say, let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. If you're trying to, like uh, like I say, when they talk about trying to convince someone that the truth is the truth, that's different. But I'm not seeing a lot of that in the witness form. I'm seeing a lot of fighting because it all ends in name slamming and stuff like that. They're you know saying that's not of the Ruach. That's not of the most high uh, bashing somebody because they disagree with you in the scriptures. One say that they don't want to do uh, Shabbat on this day, one want to do it on that day, and they get to fighting at each other. Like it does, that's not of the route. That's just you, Connor. Like right. saying, and the thing is, in the end, he's going to reveal all things, but I'm seeing so many people just stuck and gun hold on doctrinal differences to the point where they're not doing the work of Yah. And those that saying they're doing, they're not. All I'm seeing is the fight going on. I'm not seeing anything being reproduced in their life. All I'm seeing is a lot of bickering, a lot of back and forth over what, you know, what day is the Shabbat and all this kind of stuff, like a bunch of food is going on. So it's like, it's not going to amount to anything if your heart ain't right with the most high, because you know, we can all sit down and, and five or six of us going to come up with something different. But do we respect one another? That's the thing. If we don't respect one another, then it's not going to even matter. And, uh, so let's do, let's do, we're going to end with 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, 16 over 2. Second Timothy. Yeah, chapter 2. two verse Nevertheless, the foundation of Yah stands sure, having this seal. Yahuwah knows them that are his. And let everyone that names the name of Yahuwah depart from iniquity. See, yeah? so let everyone that names the name of Yahuwah depart from iniquity. But he say, Yahuwah knows those that are his, having this seal. Do you have that seal? That's the thing. And the only way you can get that seal, you have to depart from iniquity if you're naming the name of Yahuwah. But we have people that's 
And he told them in the end, he said, depart from me, your work was a what? Iniquity. And so it's the same thing as parallel and the same thing as say, you must depart. So you ain't going to take iniquity into the kingdom. He's letting you know and when you when you translate this, no iniquity can come in the kingdom. No flesh can come into the kingdom. So if you're in the flesh, then you can't come in. That's the thing. It's just a done deal. You can't come in. So there's no sense of tricking yourself, thinking that you can skip it. You can't skip it. You have to repent in order to be born again. You have to repent to make baptism make sense. I mean, because other than that, it's just going to be you getting wet. And when you come up, you're not going to come up seeking the will of Yah because you never went in seeking the will of Yah. You went in to do a ritual. I want to get immersed like that. It's something that you're excited about doing. It's an action that you're looking at. And that's it. That action is just an action of obedience that calls duty to a whole nother action. I mean, you have to do a whole nother thing to make that even count for it. And so this is what we're looking at. And we're not saying don't do it, but it should be both of them. Right. You know what I'm saying? It should be both of them. It should be the water baptism along with the Ruach HaKadosh and Fas. And that's what you got to have. Without that, it's going to be hard to make it to the kingdom. That's it. All right, well, that's pretty much sum it up. Uh, we're going to end off with prayer. Father, y'all just thank you right now for just uh, allowing the word to come forth. We thank you right now. We are in a repentant mind, uh, mindset. We thank you right now. We understand we must turn from our wicked ways, Father, y'all, to seek you. We thank that we let our will go, Father, y'all, to do the will of you. We just magnify your name for this day that you have made, which you continue to rejoice and be glad in. In the name of the Son, you shall be we pray. So be it.